Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to The Weekly Option. This is episode 149 on January 16th, 2021. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, we will cover the trades from last week on Antero Resources Corporation, General Electric, and GoGo Inc., and we discuss three new trades on Evolus Inc., Microvision, and BlackBerry. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here on the show or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E-R-I-C at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a short video series to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. Now, the U.S. equity markets were lower this week, finally pulling off from all of the previous highs we've made. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 283 points, ending the week at 30,814 points. The S&P 500 Index fell 56 points, closing at 3,768 points. Now it's time for the topic of the week. And the topic of the week this week is simply the benefit of trading options. Now, I've been asked the question, why do you trade options? Or Why do you prefer to trade options rather than stock and futures? Well, aside from having years of experience doing this, uh, the answer has to do with two things, money management and leverage. So by using options, I can create scenarios where I use less of my capital to create positions that I want in stock. This allows me to have uh, either larger positions on or more money available more capital available to enter other positions. So to sort of walk through this, I wanted to use a numerical example. So let's take a look at Apple stock. The shares, Apple shares closed the week at $127.14 per share. So to control 100 shares of stock, I need $12,714 of capital. So rather than use that amount, I can buy a deep in the money call option for a lot less than that. Let's say I buy the February, so this would be expiring February 19th, 2021, so five weeks from now. I decide to buy the February 100 call for $27.80. So in real terms, that would be $2,780 to control 100 shares of stock. The option, of course, is $27.14 in the money, meaning that $2,714 of that price that I just mentioned is simply the intrinsic value of the option. That's how much the stock will have appreciated. So you're only actually paying an extra 66 cents or in real terms, $66 for the optionality. It's not bad. So which would you rather spend? $12,714 to control 100 shares or $2,780 to control 100 shares? And that also points out the leverage that I mentioned. So for the same amount of money, I can either buy 100 actual shares of Apple stock or I can buy four deep in the money options that will allow me to control and mimic the returns of 400 shares of stock. Now, yes, the options could go to zero, but you have quite a bit of intrinsic value to chew through before it gets there. So that allows you to, that hopefully that numerical example will allow you to understand money management, meaning simply using my capital most effectively to seek higher returns. And then, of course, leverage, being able to do a lot more with a lot less. I'm obviously biased. I mean, what do you expect from a guy who has an, a podcast on option trading? So, uh, And I've been doing this for 20-something years, so I view this a lot differently, but there are plenty of people who understand money management and leverage and prefer options over uh, simply putting their money in stock alone. So that's it for the topic of the week. If you guys ever have any questions or even want to challenge me on my opinions and my thoughts on these topics of the week, feel free to email me. Uh, You can reach me at eric at theweeklyoption.com. 
So let's get into the review of last week's trades. Of course, we're going to start off with the covered call. We looked at Antero Resources Corporation, symbol A as in Alpha, R as in Romeo. At the time, the stock was trading for $5.98 per share. I looked at buying that stock and selling the February 7 call at $0.30, cents, hoping for a maximum return of 22% in six weeks. Well, Antero Resources gained $1.28 per share, ending the week at $7.26 per share. The call option we sold gained $0.65, cents, leaving us with a net profit of $0.63 cents if you were to close the trade today. Now, of course, if you hold the trade and the stock remains above $7 per share, you'll more than double that profit at option expiration in a few weeks. So this trade worked. I wouldn't make any adjustments. No adjustments are actually needed because the trade worked unless you decided to go ahead and take your uh, money off the table. You'll never go broke taking a profit. You just most likely will uh, take your your earnings on your trades that make money. You'll take them out of the market too soon and never actually uh, achieve the full return goal that you wanted. But hey, $0.63 cents in a week on roughly $600 of capital, still about, you know, you still made 10% a week. So hard to sneeze at that, right? So let's uh, let's go ahead to this, the next trade, the credit spread. We looked at General Electric, symbol G as in golf, E as in echo. Now, th at the time, the stock was trading for $11.34 per share. And I looked at selling the February 11, 10 put spread at 31 cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of 69 cents. Now, GE stock fell one penny this week, closing at $11.33 per share. The out of the money put spread we sold is still out of the money, and it would cost you four cents to cross the bid ask spread to close this trade for the moment at the time. So, in all fairness, this trade has held its value over the week, and I always focus on the stock price. If the stock were to close right here, this trade would be a winner, and I would still keep the full amount that I collected for selling the spread. So I'm not too keen to make any adjustments to this trade at the, at the moment. I'll wait and just see how the stock moves in the coming days and weeks before altering the trade. Obviously, if the stock falls a lot, I'm, I'm going to look to sell a call spread against it, turn it into an iron condor, and at least try to try to limit my losses. And if the stock rallies, I'll simply hold on to the trade, uh, ideally through expiration, so that I can keep the entire amount of money that I collected when I sold the spread. So that's it on the credit spread. Final trade on the week is going to be a debit spread. We looked at GoGo Inc., uh, symbol G is in golf, O is in Oscar, G is in golf, O is in Oscar, go go. At the time, the stock was trading for $10.28 per share. I looked at buying the February 9 10 call spread for $0.65, cents, hoping for a maximum gain of $0.35 cents per spread or a 53.85% return in six weeks. Well, GoGo stock rose $0.70 cents this week closing at $10.98 per share on Friday. The in-the-money call spread we bought is still in the money. If you were to add to the spread, it would cost you $0.95, cents, and that's for $1 spread. So if you closed it by selling, uh, the bid, uh, selling the bid, you would actually lose $0.15. Cents. So if you take the midpoint of the bid-ask spread on this, it's $0.75, cents, which means that that's $0.10 cents higher than what we actually paid for the spread. Now, regardless of all of those numbers, hopefully you followed along, we know that if stock stays here or goes higher in the next five weeks, this spread will expire worth $1, allowing us to lock in a 53.85% return on capital. So no adjustments are needed at this point at all. Just definitely uh, stay aware of the stock price and keep an eye on it so that you can uh, make sure that you uh, protect any profit that you have built into the spread. Now let's take a look at the trades for this upcoming week. And of course, uh, we're looking fully at the February expiration, which is February the 19th. That's five weeks from now. And uh, just a reminder that today, January the 15th, I'm actually recording this on Friday night, January the 15th, was options expiration for option for January options. So any January option positions you have are either priced at their intrinsic value or at zero. So 
hopefully you were able to lock in some profits. We made some good trades last month. Um, okay, so the first call, the first trade we're going to do this week is, as usual, the covered call. And I'm looking at another small stock. And as a side note, someone emailed me recently and said, hey, it's great that you uh, do affordable, you choose trades that are affordable. And my goal for this show really is to present trades that are across the spectrum. If you notice, most of the stock values are pretty low. I'm typically not looking at trading a, uh, let's see, a Google or some other really high price stock, a Facebook or some, a Tesla. And the reason for that is that on this show, I really want to show everyone how affordable and attainable it is to you know, trade options and and use them in your portfolio to get higher than normal returns. So because of that, I like to stick with uh, stocks that are relatively low, typically under $50 uh, in price. Uh, and certainly for the covered calls, I want to make sure that someone who has, say, a $1,000 or $2,000 or even a $5,000 account can actually participate. Um, there's nothing worse than having someone walk you through all of these opportunities that just from a capital perspective are so far out of reach that you walk away thinking, well, I don't have enough money. No, you definitely, if you have some risk capital, uh, I like to say at least $5,000, but uh, it could be less than that with some uh, specific brokerages. Um, you can you can trade options, you can learn to trade options and become more familiar with options and then start growing your capital base a lot larger. So that all being said, we're looking this week, a covered call on, I believe it's pronounced Evolus or Evolus uh, Inc., symbol E-O-L-S, E as in Echo, O as in Oscar, L as in Lima, S as in Sierra. The stock ended the week at $5.83 per share, and I'm looking at buying that stock and selling the February 6th call at $0.90, cents, hoping for a maximum return of 18.35% in five weeks. Now, you enter this trade by buying Evelis stock for $5.83 and selling the February 6th call at $0.90. Cents. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $6 per share, and the break-even price is $4.93 per share. Now, in real terms, the stock purchase would require $583, and you would collect $90 for selling the option. Our next trade is going to be a credit spread. This time, I'm looking at Microvision, symbol MVIS, M as in Mike, V as in Victor, I as in India, S as in Sierra. The stock ended the week at $6.61 per share, and I'm looking at selling the February 6 five and a half put spread at 25 cents, which could create a maximum possible loss of 25 cents. And as a side note, I really looked at this company. I looked at the stock chart to see if I could ascertain a direction and really felt like um, a trade that benefited as the market went higher would be best. But what's interesting is with the 50 cent spread uh, being priced at 25 cents, I got nervous. Like you get to the point where you start to read uh, the tea leaves, if you will, about the stock based on uh, how the option is being priced. And what's funny is the put spread is priced uh, right now. You could sell it for 25 cents. You could sell the call spread for 25 cents. So it's almost like a 50-50 chance which is great because we're going to collect 50% of the value for this spread. So it's where, rare that we get a one-to-one -one, uh, risk-return ratio on a credit spread, uh, these spreads that we're selling. So in this scenario, $0.25. Cents. So you enter this trade by selling the February 6 put at $1.05 and concurrently buying the February 5.5 put for $0.80. Cents. Now, this is a credit spread because we are selling the spread, and this trade makes the most money if stock prices stay above $6 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $5.75, and in real terms, you would receive $25 per spread that you sell, and you'd have $25 at risk. And our final trade on the week is a debit spread. We, we're looking at BlackBerry, and it's funny because I look at this stock every week and it's so rare that I find an opportunity that fits my parameters and this week it works. So 
looking at, uh, so BlackBerry, symbol BB, that's B as in Bravo, B as in Bravo, the stock ended the week at $9.84 per share. And I'm looking at buying the February 8, 9 call spread, paying $0.62 cents for the spread, hoping for a maximum gain of $0.38, cents, or that's a 61.29% return in five weeks. Now, you enter this trade by buying the February 8 call for $2.70 and concurrently selling the February 9 call at $2.08. This is a debit spread because we are buying the spread, and this trade makes the most money if stock prices stay above $9 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $8.62 per share. And in real terms, you will pay $62 to enter this spread, and your maximum gain is $38 per spread. So that's it for this week's show. Thank you guys so much for listening. It's a new year. I'm back to full health. I am feeling amazing. I hope you guys, even through all the political stuff that's happened in the U.S., even through a possible, a, a, a very likely upcoming pandemic response from the government, even through all of this, I hope you are looking at 2021 uh, positively, optimistically. Expect good returns because if you've got, if you have an understanding of options, Trust me, the volatility in this market, you're going to see some opportunities to make some money and to be able to limit risk, right? Our goal is always to lock in profit and lower risk. So that's it for the show for the week. Thanks again for listening. Please share it with friends of yours that love option trading or are thinking about option trading as well. And as usual, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.